Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the June, July 23rd, 2020 meeting of the Village of Pinehurst Historic Preservation Commission. The purpose of the commission is to approve certificates of appropriateness for new construction or major work, and to do so by conducting hearings and making findings of fact when applications come before us. Our mission is to take no action except to preserve and approve that which is congruous with the special character of the Village of Pinehurst Historic District. I'm Eric von Sols, and the chairman of the commission. And I'm going to ask each of the uh, commissioners, starting from my left, to introduce themselves. Richard Vincent. Tom Schroeder. David oh. Herring. <laughs> Don Taylor. Very large. We are uh, all present, uh, so we have a quorum and can proceed. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial hearing, so anyone desiring to testify must be sworn in, and we are required to consider only facts presented in this hearing. Pro proceedings are video recorded. Uh, the first order of business is to approve the uh, minutes from the prior meeting. Uh, I'm informed uh, by Kelly that some changes have been made from the version of the minutes that uh, was circulated uh, to the members of the commission. If you would uh, tell us what those changes are, uh, we'll consider the minutes uh, amended and vote on the amended minutes. Um, the, the changes that I received were minor. Um, it was just some editing, um, moving around some of the the paragraphs in there, um, and then there was a second on there for the approval of the last minutes that was not recorded. Uh, the Does anyone recall who seconded the motion to approve the minutes at the last meeting? My recollection is it was Richard, but uh, I'm... That's but, good for me. I'll fall on the sword. Yeah. <laughs> Richard was the was the seconder, and uh, on uh, the second excuse me, second page of uh, the minutes under uh, the two zero zero two zero sixty seven uh, certificate of appropriateness, uh, we've moved uh, the two paragraphs beginning. Mr. Taylor moved uh, to uh, down one space. And I think that's the only change. So, as amended, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? Second. Make a note of who the second is. Mr. Lertz. Uh, uh, motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Uh, Someone make a motion to open the public hearing, please. So moved. moved. And is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're now in the public hearing. Um, go by each uh, commissioner and ask you to, to disclose any site visits or any ex parte communications. Starting with Mr. Vincent. Visited all properties, no ex parte communication. Broder? Visited all properties, no ex parte communication. Visited all, no communication. I visited all the properties and had no communications. I visited all, no communications, no conflict of interest, and no bias or fixed opinion. <laughs> I visited all and had no ex parte communications. I visit it all and have no ex parte communication. The uh, first case uh, on our agenda today uh, is Certificate of Appropriateness 2020-00079 involving 605 Linden Road. Property owners are Judy, Melody, no. Judy's wrong, isn't it? It's Boyd and Melody Simpson, and the applicant is James Secchi. Uh, uh, Mr. Secchi, 
present. While he's coming up, could I just make a, a point of, uh, of interest, I guess? We've reconfigured the agenda that we published. Is that correct? In the, as far as order goes? Uh, that's incorrect. I made an error, and I assumed that I scheduled it based on order of the applications, but I went ahead and just did it beforehand. So I was being... So the agenda posted matches the... The, the agenda posted uh, reflects what's going to be heard tonight. Never mind. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, uh, Mr. Secchi, will you raise your right hand? Uh, Eric, will you swear me in at the same time, please? All right, Peter, will you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, before we proceed, is there anyone else uh, in the room who wishes to be heard in connection with this matter? 605 Linden Road. If you do, you can come forward and be sworn and can testify at an appropriate time. All right, hearing none. Uh, uh, Peter, would you like to uh, present the case? Yes, sir. The purpose of this public hearing is to consider a request within the Pinehurst Historic District for the addition of a six-foot fence in the side yard at 60, sorry, 605 Linden Road. Typically, fences are a minor COA. However, in the Historic District, side yard fences are limited to four feet, and as such, a request for six feet, six-foot fence must be reviewed by the Historic Preservation Commission. The property can be further... Further identified in Moore County Tax Registry by Moore County PIN number 855-210-354-890. The property owners are Judy and Boyd, are Boyd and Melody Simpson, and the applicant is James Secchi. This is a picture of the front from the street. As you can see, it's very far set back in the property. This is a close-up version of the residence at 605 Linden Road. Um, 605 Linden has been previously approved for four major COAs previously. Um, one was for an addition to the home, an addition of a pool, fencing, relocation of existing drive, changes to a previously approved addition, additions of a front yard patio, and relocation of an arbor. There's also been a couple minors, um, with a minor for fencing around a spa and a minor for a bluestone side yard patio in 2009. Um, the primary structure at 605 Linden is not listed as a contributing structure within our historic landmark survey and none of the adjacent properties within the public hearing notice were, also, were listed as contributing structures as well. Um, this is a list of the notified properties. As you can see, none of them were contributing structures, and most of them were built pretty, or are pretty late or were not built upon yet. There's one that was built in 1920, but is not listed once again in our National Historic Landmark Survey. Uh, this is our notification map. Uh, 605 Linden is in red. The notification of the properties of all adjacent property owners <coughs> are the ones shown in yellow. Um, there are three different prop or sorry, four different property owners that were notified. Majority of them were Miss Debbie Brenner, who the adjacent Linden Close Development or Seville. Savile, my bad, Savile Row. Um, the applicant is proposing a six foot side yard fence. Um, and the guidelines side yard fences are limited to four feet. So this request is before you guys for that reason. Um, as previously stated, the applicant is proposing this six-foot fence. Uh, the guidelines show a graphic that has three and a half for front, four feet for side, and six feet. Um, this is a unique request because 605 <coughs> was set on the lot prior to our current zoning regulations. So its building footprint is situated in such a place that it only has a defined rear yard of five feet in depth. Now, I got that from measuring using GIS, so it could be plus or minus a few feet. Um, but typically, a rear yard would be 25 or 30 feet, creating the space that this applicant is trying to get from a fenced-in rear yard. Um, the proposed fencing style of wrought iron is compliant. Um, if the fence were approved, it would be over 200 feet from the roadway and over 50 feet from the furthest protrusion forward from the building itself. So it's not going to be visible from the street. Um, so to emphasize that, I took a picture of the garage here. The garage is that furthest protrusion forward. You can vaguely see that path leading back to the fence that's currently there. That's the temporary fence. That's a solution to the current deer problem on the property. Um, that will be taken down pending approval. Um, once again, it's showing how far back we're set back in the lot. We're from the road. We can't even really see the house. So if we can't really see the house. We're not going to be able to see this fence. Um, the site plan that was submitted is showing you where that fence is going to be. And, you know, if this was a normal lot, lot or if it was set up in a way where that building was brought forward, and was inside the building envelope, this applicant would have the ability to build a compliant fence that's six feet high that meets their needs. But, you know, it's very rare to see a building like this that's elongated and encroaches that much into a rear property um, setback. 
Um, the applicant is proposing wrought iron, but it's also proposing a, a wood gate that's been shown here in the elevation that was submitted. Um, this is the elevation example of a wrought iron fencing. And then this was the example of the gate that's in practice already, so to get a, a better visual of what it's going to look like. And then the applicant's building materials is a fence, you know, wood gate, white entry gate, and black aluminum. At this time, staff would like to enter the staff report, presentation, application, applicant's materials, photos, site plans, and findings of fact into the record. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Uh, Mr. Herring. I have a question. It's, it's called wrought iron, but it's actually painted aluminum. Is that right? Yeah, just so it just has to have the appearance of painted aluminum is permissible. Um, it just has to be painted to resemble black wrought iron. Thank so you. that's compliant. Peter, uh, why is adding the fence in back an issue before us? Because it's compliant with the height, right? So it's not. So the side there, so the way we define rear, side, and front yard is based on the building. So the front edge of the building to the back edge of the building. That area is the side yard. Anything behind the building is the rear yard. Anything in front of the yard is the front yard. So he's proposing a fence that's in the side yard as defined by our zoning code, and that's how I have to regulate. But there's a fence on the rear that's six feet too, right? So that's okay. So yeah, so I think what you're getting at is that neighboring properties, if they were to build a fence that's being proposed, they could build it because it is in their rear yard. Right. So they could build a six foot fence on this location if they were proposing it but the applicant can't because it's not their rear yard. That makes well, no, sense. in their, their rear yard, they're proposing six feet, right? Yeah, so they're proposing six feet here along the back, if you can see my cursor go right. across the screen. So that's... That's compliant. Yeah, it's that's this, what I'm saying. It's this section right here, right? and this section right here that's not compliant because right. that's their side yard. Okay. Their rear yard is really just from this point of the building to the rear property line. So the sides are the only... So the sides are the only thing that you guys right. are making a decision on, that rear... Fence line, it's compliant. I could approve it today, but a single wall with no closed off section does kind of defeats the purpose of a fence. The $64,000 question, <coughs> why six feet? Well, Here. Uh, why don't we let Mr. Secchi give his testimony? And, oh, and then ab he, absolutely. That's fine. That's a perfect question. The, the, the Simpsons do not want to put up a fence, but the deer are destroying plant material, sod, everything they seem to plant is very tasty to the animals. And that section of town, I've talked to the neighbors, they've had the same problem. That was the mainstay of it. Get deer something can that they over. can't jump over. Okay. <laughs> that, and six is as high as it goes, so that was, uh, that was really the issue. I will tell you, I live not too far uh, from this location. Uh, we have a, normally have a family of deer living in the woods behind our house, uh, and uh, they eat a lot of stuff. Uh, so I'm, I sympathize with, uh, with the <laughs> desire to keep them out of your garden, out of the owner's garden. Uh, are there any other questions, comments? Well, just a comment, I guess. I mean, and I just to set the table here, I mean, I think six feet is fine because one, it's not visible from the road, from Linden Road at all, right? That's clear. It wouldn't be. And two, on the right, the second reason, I guess, for the right side, um, it backs up to Savile Row's backyard, so it would be six feet there anyway. So that's, those are reasons I would approve for those two reasons. Any other questions? Uh, all right, well, and I think that begins our discussion. Uh, any uh, other uh, comments? Uh, or are we ready to have a motion? I think Mr. Lertz is going to make a motion. Upon due consideration of the application package submitted and the testimony given, the historic Preservation Commission concludes the following, that the project as proposed is not in conformity with the guidelines. Nevertheless, the applicant has satisfied the burden of persuasion and the project subject to any conditions imposed by the commission, which are none, is deemed congruous with the Pinehurst Historic District. Is there a second? Second. Well, can, can I add something first? Can we describe why we're approving this now? We can't? Don't need to. Well, no. Good point. Uh, 
seems why to did, me we want. Why didn't you make a statement for the record and it will be included? Well, I did. I had those two reasons. Right. Records on tape. Heard me? Yeah, I know, but it would be nice for the collective group, it seems to me, to have. I think that's right. And why, why don't you state, if you can, briefly why. Okay, I would say our, this. Our, our, reason, our reasoning, if everyone agrees, for approving this is, one, um, it cannot be seen from the road, and two, on the right side, it backs up to someone's backyard on Savile Row, and they could have six feet. So those are the two reasons why I would approve it. I would add that uh, it's also because of the peculiarity of this particular building's location on its lot, which makes it impossible for them to accomplish a reasonable objective while conforming to our guidelines. It wouldn't in and of itself necessarily be dispositive, but it is, in my view, part of the reason that this seems like a reasonable thing to do. Okay. All right, any further discussion? Uh, very well. Ready for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. It's carried unanimously. Thank you. You have your certificate. Thank you very of appropriate. much. Peter, I'd like to add that you've done an absolutely fantastic job presenting the information. Very well, very well done. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for your comment. We appreciate that. It's already on, sir. You're all set. Just bring the microphone over in front of you so that you speak into the microphone. Thank you. All right, Eric, are we ready for the next case? Hold on. Yes. I think we, uh, you hear next, him? Next case is... Uh, hey. Thank you. Certificate of Appropriateness 2020-00087 involving 60 Cherokee Road. Uh, it's 86, I believe. Oh, I'm out of order then. Now I'm in the order. Uh, 55 Cherokee. Yes. 2020 uh, Property owners are Judy and David Fetter, and the applicant is Butler Construction. And you uh, take it, represent Butler Construction? Yes, sir. Could you state your name, please? I'm Sean Butler. Butler, and would you raise your right hand, please? Uh, do you... Uh, Swear that the testimony you are about to give uh, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I did. Thank you. Peter? The purpose of this public hearing is to consider a request within the Pinehurst Historic District for multiple exterior modifications at 55 Cherokee Road. The modification include the following, the following. Replacement of existing siding with new material, the replacement of existing roof, replacement of existing trim material, and replacement of existing windows. The property can be further identified in Moore County Tax Registry by Moore County PIN number 855-212-954-812. The property owners are Judy and David Fetter, and the applicant is Butler Construction. Uh, so this is a picture of 55 Cherokee Road taken from Cherokee Road by staff. The background on this property is, is uh, there's been two previous major COAs issued for it, the, the construction of a six-foot white picket fence and a trellis in 2008, and the demolition of a 1970s addition and construction of a new addition to the home in 2008. Um, one minor COA was issued in 2008 for removal of trees along Azalea. Um, the primary structure of 55 Cherokee Road is listed within the National Historic Landmark Survey and is considered a contributing building. All of the adjacent properties within the public hearing were also listed as contributing structures. 55 Cherokee was, James w. Tufts, was built by James W. Tufts at Pine Grove House as a boarding house. During its early years, it was catered primarily to the village musicians, but other boarded there as well, including Donald Ross and his bride for the season of 1905. So this is one of our historic structures and is located in the heart of the downtown. So here's a notification map that we used for notifying property owners. In that notification was also the Pinehurst Country Club. As you can see, there are tennis courts, tennis courts to the south, and then 60 Cherokee, which Sean Butler is also representing tonight, was also notified. Um, Shingo Pin and Cherokee is kind of the convergence of our downtown, so once again, this is in the heart of our downtown area and is part of the more historic section of our town. 
The, this request is before the commission because according to the Village of Pinehurst Historic District Guidelines, replacement of existing siding with new siding material and replacement of windows with new material is considered major work. Um, the, application, the applicant is proposing to renovate the exterior of the 55 using different material. He's changing from vinyl siding to hardy board. Um, the non-historic windows will be replaced with non-historic windows. The roof will be replaced using architectural shingles to match existing, and the wood trim will be replaced with the hardy trim board material as well. So the applicant submitted a few elevations. Here is the elevation of the front elevation. Um, he is changing the dormers at the top. He's changing them to a shake. So that will be a change. That's a common um, architectural feature throughout the district. It's a craftsman style feature. Shake siding, especially on the dormers, is something you're going to see throughout the district as a whole. Here we have the west side elevation, which I believe is the right elevation. Um, once again, we're changing that top part of the structure to shake. This is, once again, a common contrast of material, contrast of textures within that craftsman style of architecture, so that change is compliant and is congruous with the historic district. Here is the rear elevation, um, or the east side elevation. Oop, messed up. Um, yep, sorry, this is the right one. My apologies. So he is adding a seamed metal roof. Um, so that is one change in material. Metal roofs is fine. Um, he's proposing a metal roof that meets the standards within the guidelines. He's maintaining the construction of the windows with six over one. And once again, we're changing that shake style at the top and as compliant with the craftsman style of architecture. Um, just to emphasize the windows staying the same, I took a snippet to show you guys that it is staying six over six. Um, there is one difference. The upper level windows will not have shutters and the lower level uh, windows will have shutters. Um, the applicant has not proposed to use new shutters, but if he did, that could be handled through a minor COA. Um, the applicant's building material list was submitted here. And then I believe he has some samples for you to pass around, which he will get to during, well, he can do it right now, if you'd like. Um, at this time, staff would like to end their staff report, enter the staff report, presentation, application, applicants material, photos, slide plans, and findings of fact into the record. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, if there are no questions for uh, Peter, uh, while that material is being passed around, uh, Mr. Butler, would you like to uh, uh, address the application? Sure. Um, I'm excited to be here talking to you guys, excited to be involved with Dr. Fetter and what he's doing there. It's a, it's a great potential project. Um, in entirety, I think Peter you know, explained it pretty well. One interesting thing we're doing here is if you look at some of the gable ends, some of the reveals on the um, the soffit, it's a very flat and one-dimensional um, building as of right now. And the reason we were adding extensions on the soffit was just for 3D depth and actually to bring it into, in my mind, the historical Cape Cod cottage that I'm familiar with. Um, so that is exciting to me. I think it's going to be a, a great distinction. Um, and then, obviously, the metal standing seam roof, I noticed in Peter's <clears throat> very detailed description, he had a question about the, the height of the seam. It's not going to be commercial. It's going to be within the range that you guys see residentially. Um, so it will be underneath the inch increment that Peter put in his application that you see. Um, also, we're doing a five-inch reveal on the Hardy, which... Out of the homes that we've done, we haven't done five very often. That's a little bit smaller, and I think that's more in line with the architecture look we're going for. Should give it more depth. The, the home to the right, I don't know exactly the address, but that's a six-plus reveal. Um, so I, I think this is a little bit disting, distinguished um, upon that factor. Um, only other thing I noticed was Peter mentioned the shutters. That's a, a solid core PVC product. Um, very dense. It's not the typical um, extruded plastic that you would in anticipate with PVC. We are reusing those, so there's really no change with what's there for what we're proposing. We'll just be taking those off and reinstalling. Um, he's got really nice shutter dogs and um, faux hinges. I think it looks very apropos for what we're going for. Um, we do have three different types of trim. I didn't go into that in detail here. I just felt like it was a little much. Um, but we came up with a, a, a design profile 
because he's got three different um, spatial elements in his construction. For instance, where the um, the roof meets the upper windows, there's not enough room for a, a bottom piece of trim in some degree. So we've done a, um, a trim package for that. So we really have three distinct trims um, with stools and very deep um, reveals. So it's high grade and very pleasing in product. Um, so yeah, uh, I didn't also put a white because we were just undetermined at the time, but it will be within the historic um, color palette as Peter mentioned. If you guys have anything else for me, I'm, I'm definitely. Any questions for Mr. Butler? I have one question on the color of the middle roof. Bronze, a dark bronze. Bronze. Yes, sir. <clears throat> bronze is a bronze. permitted color. Talking about the the open whale and then the height of the yeah um, don't have the actual detail with me right now, but from my recollection, it's about an inch and an eighth, which is I think what it should be for the proximity of the road and the small um, amount of roof you actually see. Say an inch and an eighth. Sir. Okay. Uh, and our standard is that they should not exceed an inch and a quarter. So you satisfied that uh, requirement. Uh, any other questions? Yes, um, are you not replacing the, the porch or the? No, um, it's already been brought up to, at some point, Dave, the property owner might actually know when, but it's, um, it's solid wood, it's tongue and groove, it's very nice. Yes, yes, ma'am. And the doors? No changes on the exterior doors. Gutters, downspouts? We'll be taking the gutters off and, and putting them back. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Yeah, question on the louvered vents underneath the sort of new extended soffit that you're going to create. Do those stay or you're replacing those? Replacing all vinyl product, and those are right now are vinyl. Nothing similar to that? Uh, it, it's going to be hardy, so it'll be similar to your house. With my house <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I got it. I have one question too. In the proposed west side elevation, under the bay window on the second floor, what is it you're illustrating with the little curly? Is that a trellis or? It's just hard to tell from Peter's existing snapshot, but that's there. That's just a um, a rafter end that's been um, contoured for aesthetic reasons, but that's just. Existing. It's existing. Yes, sir. So the photo below looks like there's some retractable awning there. We'll be taking it off and putting it back. It's there now. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Uh, hearing none, uh, discussion <coughs> among the commissioners. Thank you for testimony, Mr. Butler. I had only one question. It's been answered, so... Uh, I'm prepared uh, for a vote. Does anybody uh, want further discussion before I entertain a motion? Uh, who would like to uh, make a motion? I'm the chair. I can't make a motion. Somebody else is going to have to do it. I will. Uh, there have been a number of things noted, but are we saying that this is or is not in conformance with the guidelines? It would be. All the material is in compliance, and all the changes are matching a craftsman-style architecture. Um, then, um, upon due consideration of the application package submitted and the testimony given, the Historic Preservation Commission concludes the following, that the applicant has satisfied the burden of persuasion and the project as proposed, subject to any conditions, I don't believe I heard any conditions, um, imposed by the con commission is congruous with the Pinehurst Historic District and consistent with historic district guidelines. Second. And by Mr. Lertz. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously. You have your certificate of appropriateness. Thank you for your review. He's not going anywhere. He's the next case as well. <laughs> all right. The next but case. It's really cool to see what's going on all along that road. <laughs> That's um, right. It's going to get busy. Kind of one after another after another. Exactly. Right? I was surprised. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the next case uh, is uh, 
00087 involving 60 Cherokee Road. Uh, the property owners are Anna and Wesley Smith, and the applicant is Butler Construction. <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Butler. Uh, Peter, would you like to present the case? Yes, sir. The purpose of this public hearing is to consider a request within the Pinehurst Historic District for the addition of a greenhouse to an existing accessory dwelling, dwelling at 60 Cherokee Road. The property can be further identified in the Moore County Tax Register by Moore County PIN number 855-212-956-743. The property owners are Anna and Wesley Smith, and the applicant is Butler Construction. So this is the picture from, I believe, the Salia Road of 60 Cherokee. Um, it is a contributing structure. Um, it has had two previous major COAs, a new front entry deck, screened-in porch, new windows, new paint, siding repair, and alterations to the accessory structure were made in 2017. An addition of a carport on the right side of the home was approved in 2008. Um, the primary structure at 60 Cherokee Road is listed as a contributing structure, and all but one of the adjacent properties within the public hearing notification area are listed as contributing structures. Um, the Dartmouth was built in 1897 as an apartment house for seasonal guests at Pinehurst. The one and a half story frame house is a shingle clad and features a hip roof, hip dormers, and wraparound porch terrace. Um, it was constructed in 1897. It is adjacent to Five Village Green, which was built in 1905. 75 was built in 1895. 65 Cherokee was built in 1895. 55 Cherokee was built in 1895. All these are part of our very historic downtown, and all of them were built when the village was becoming the village. This is the notification map for 60 Cherokee Road. Um, as you can see, the P Pinehurst Resort was notified, and all the adjacent properties in downtown are in the core of our downtown area and historic district. Um, the request is before us because any addition and new construction are considered major work. Um, the applicant is proposing a, to construct a 120 square foot greenhouse that will be attached to the existing accessory structure. Um, this is the site plan the applicant submitted. We don't require uh, surveyed site plans for small additions like this, especially when they're not encroaching on any setback. Um, so this is the reason why this is a permissible site plan. Um, as you can see, it's 10 by 12, so it's going to be 120 square feet. And then the A, B, and C are um, legends for the following photos that was submitted by the applicants showing where the structure is going to be located. Um, so view A is from the Cherokee Road, view B is underneath that carport that was approved in 2008, and C is a zoomed in version of that same shot from the carport. Um, this is the elevation submitted by the applicant. Um, as you can see, that he is doing his best to disguise a greenhouse. Um, it's going to be one of the nicest greenhouses I can imagine you will find out there. Um, he's using cedar shake siding, which will be white to match the existing structure. Um, he's giving it that brick skirting, giving it that permanent look so it doesn't look like it's just a greenhouse, but looks like it's part of that construction itself. Um, he is using a steel channeled tempered glass panels. Um, those are not listed as compliant or not compliant, but it is a greenhouse, so it's kind of compliant with the fact that it's there for the use. Um, it's hard to be a greenhouse without having the right glassing in there to create that humid environment. Um, staff provided some additional photos just to show that this is going to be matching the structure. So as you can see in that far right one, it's the zoomed in version from Cherokee. Um, it is it got that shake siding. Um, the product of this uh, addition is one tree will end up being taken out. It's the tree shown there in the photo right next to the building. Um, so that is going to come down. It's not a specimen tree or one of our pine trees, um, but it is visible from the roadway. So it is part of this package of approval. Um, and here again, we have another picture from Cherokee Road kind of taken between the trees. So this addition will be visible from the street, but the accessory dwelling is already visible from the street. So it's not further creating a new um, variable to the situation there. Um, the applicant submitted a building material list. It's, he's using shake, which is compliant. It's going to be that hardy material. And then it's got a vinyl white windows. Vinyl is not an appropriate material, um, but we've approved vinyl previously. And it's up to the commission to make sure that we approve it. If we do, it'll be that second motion on um, the brick foundation painted white. Um, it's painted white to match the rest of the structure. And that tempered glass frame, which by the way, I mentioned earlier, it's neither compliant nor incompliant but be mindful that it is part of the whole design of the structure to be functional. At this time, I'd like to enter the staff report, presentation, application, <coughs> applicants material, photos, and site plans, and findings of fact into the record, and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Peter? And? Oh. So everything is compliant except is the tree also? The tree is also compliant. Okay. Um, so when you're doing new construction and you're taking out a tree to make space for it. It's not ideal, obviously. You know, you want to keep all your trees you can. Mm -hmm. But in order to fit the space that they current ha currently have, they're not being 
negligent or being over aggressive in taking that tree out to create this space. Um, and they're only removing one, so it's not a lot. And it's not a tree that's a pine or something that's, you know, our mature, you know, character-defining trees of the historic district. Uh, Tom? Another one. Could you get back to the picture of the tree in it? I want to make sure I've got the right tree. You're talking... Uh, it's this one right here. On the right, my right. Cursor. Okay, thank you. It's this okay. tree right here. I apologize. I should have put a red dot or something to annotate which tree's coming out. I thought it was, but I just wanted to make it clear for the record that that's the tree that's coming out and not It's some the tree other. that's directly adjacent to the um, accessory dwelling, for the record. Okay, thank you. Peter. It, Mr. Taylor. It, it's a fairly large lot. I didn't see anything referenced, but there's no issues with per, uh, percent permeable coverage. And uh, there is not. It's a very large lot. It's not going to come close to that. Um, we did actually review it pretty hard for the 30% rule on accessory dwelling, but through a conversation and evidence that was submitted for the zoning part of this. Uh, they have ample square footage to make this addition and it will be compliant with the zoning code. Any other questions for Peter? All right. Uh, would you like to go ahead and make your presentation? Um, Anna Smith, uh, avid gardener. Um, if you walk through your yard, there's lots of plants. Um, she's a friend of mine and I'm always telling her, hey, Let's get you a greenhouse, put them in the in the building. She, she thinks they look pretty, and they do, they do. Um, so the idea was to try to accomplish her gardening, potting, seeding, propagation in a, in a tidy little area in the yard. And we try to do it in a 90 degree corner. Um, that guest house has a very low pitch roof. Um, it's hidden from the road, from my photos. I think it's pretty well screened. We are going to do probably some additional landscaping. It's not part of this code, but we're always doing landscaping there. Um, so there's right there in that picture where the shade is, you can see this Camellia japonica. They just didn't make it, but the plan was that was supposed to be a screen, an opaque screen. So we will be replacing those, and there will be a screen there at some point in the future. So you will not see from that vantage point. Um, but yes, the the roof is a is a custom tempered glass with steel channel powder coated, um, and it's the design intent is to match the home's windows. We're actually going to use windows like in the existing home. They're actual vinyl because I recommended that um, due to the high humidity environment of a greenhouse. I didn't want to have a pine interior of a um, casement window, so we're doing true and true vinyl. But they will be a SDL. Simulated divided light, high grade ply gem vinyl uh, window casement style, and they will match the existing home from for all intents and purposes. Um, in in width of grill, width of style, um, lintel, they're going to be very very close. <clears throat> the roof we had to do that for a greenhouse just for photosynthesis and um, the most sunlight we could get penetration wise so it's a company in uh, Montreal Canada the the sample I submitted was actually from um, the greenhouse at the Pioneer's Brewing Company and I believe that's the same manufacturer I did talk to them but we quoted it three different times so I'm not sure if we're using them but it will very much look like that greenhouse that you've seen at the brewing company um, just the roof uh, the only other thing I heard from Peter's excellent and, and um, organized presentation was it will not be hardy. Um, it will be cedar shake, split cedar shake, just like the existing home. Um, that's it. And you should see that tree in the winter. It's it's um, it has no leaves. That's a joke. It's deciduous, but it's um, it's not it's not really a great outstanding tree. It's a cornus cusa, and it's actually declining. So, yeah. Do you guys have any questions for me? One question, what's the material for the coping on the brick foundation wall? Coping? And when you say oh, the top piece, brick? I'm just going to do a brick with um, just a roll put an angle on it, roll lock, yes, sir. Okay. With a, same, the same brick, it'll all be painted the same color? Exactly. Tumbled brick. Any other questions? Um, on page... And of our materials, uh, 
report uh, says that uh, under our guidelines, windows should feature true divided or simulated divided lights uh, and muttons or windows with interior fixed muttons, snap-in muttons are not appropriate. Uh, I take it you are not proposing to use snap-in muttons? Permanently affixed, yes, sir. Fixed? Fixed, yes, sir. Thank you. Not snap-in. Any other questions? Uh, thank you. Uh, discussion among the members of the commission? Or is anyone ready to make a motion? Mm -hmm. You want to go? Go ahead. <coughs> Upon due consideration of the application package submitted and the testimony given, the Historic Preservation Commission concludes the following, that the applicant has satisfied the burden of persuasion and the project as proposed subject to any conditions imposed by the commission is congruous with the Pinehurst Historic District and consistent with Historic District guidelines. Is there a second? Second. Uh, the one issue we have, though, is the vinyl windows. Is that yeah. not correct? I Those was, are uh, not. The vinyl windows are not compliant with the guidelines. Are not compliant with the guidelines. But are nevertheless keeping with the house. Correct. I'm not saying yeah. they're wrong. I'm just saying that we have to address, I think, the issue of, of the vinyl windows because they're not compliant and we're making an exception to our guidelines. That's that apply to secondary structures? It does. A suggestion would be because of the function of the structure and the humidity. Uh, I think Mr. Butler provided an excellent reason for you guys to list if you would like to include that in your motion. And they're the, they're the same as the primary yeah. residence, right? Very same? Very much so. Also in appearance. <laughs> See if this one works. Okay. Um, the issue then, I, I think, would be that we're going to authorize the use of. Well, I was going to comment on your section initially. Um, you said they were going to be similar. They would appear similar to what's in the, the main building. Is that correct? They're not necessarily the same. The same windows. Different brand, different construction, but same um, dimension of. But are they vinyl? Also, vinyl. they're vinyl on the main. On the main primary. house, they're aluminum clad. Ah, okay. I believe when he said the same, he meant style and look, not necessarily material. Well, I was asking whether they were vinyl or not, right. so it would have been. So these are going to be vinyl. The others right. are clad aluminum. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. And, and that's, so that would be. I'll the, just amend the motion. We'll just do it not in conformity, however, because of the reasons given. Okay. But the rest of the accessory windows are also vinyl? Yeah, in 2017, we did a full window replacement to the all clad. Match. Right, yeah. Try this again. Upon <laughs> the consideration of the application package submitted and the testimony given, the Historic Preservation Commission concludes the following that the project as proposed is not in, conform in conformity with the guidelines insofar as the use of vinyl windows. However, the applicant sufficiently and to the satisfaction of the commission has explained why, and that's due to humidity reasons and the use of a greenhouse. <laughs> the applicant has satisfied the burden of persuasion and the project subject to any conditions imposed by the commission is deemed congruous with the Pinus Historic District. Second. Well done. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Butler. You have your been a pleasure. Thank you, guys.
Hello. All right, the uh, next and final case uh, this afternoon is uh, Certificate of Appropriateness 2020-00085 involving 90 McCaskill Road East. Uh, the applicants and property owners are Amanda and Michael McCabe. Uh, Peter, would you present the case? Uh, can you swear, swear the applicants in? Oh, yes. You are, I assume, Amanda and Michael McCabe. Would you raise your right hands, please? Do you each swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Both witnesses have affirmed. Can the applicants move the mics a little bit closer so we can pick it up on audio? Thank you. Uh, the purpose of this public hearing is to consider a request within the Pioneer's Historic District for the demolition of an existing single-family residence and the construction of a new single-family residence at 90 McCaskill Road East. The property can be further identified in Moore County Tax Registry by Moore County PIN number 855-208-870-756. Moore County GIS lists the property owners as William Grady. However, the applicants and new property owners are Amanda and Michael McCabe. Uh, this is a picture of the front of the residence at 90 McCaskill East. Um, the background is there are no previous COAs have been issued for the, or requested for 90 McCaskill. The primary structure in 90 McCaskill is not listed as a contributing structure, and some of the adjacent properties within the public hearing notice are listed as contributing structures. Um, the ones that are listed as contributing are 55 McCaskill. Um, it was built in 1925. And we have 65 McCaskill also built in 1925, and that is the Sorry, and then one more, 40 Coldy at 1920, and 20 Coldy at nine, built in 1927 are all listed as contributing structures in the notification area. Um, on the screen right now is the notification map. Um, the property, 90 McCaskill is in red, and the properties notified are in yellow. Uh, the applicant is making two requests with this application, uh, the demolition of a primary structure and the construction of a new primary structure and accessory dwelling. Um, there's a caveat to the new construction. Uh, they are leaving the foundation during the demolition, so they're leaving the foundation to maintain a basement and expand upon the current footprint. So it is a demolition, but it's also new construction. Um, it's a little different. Um, the request to remove the existing structure must be ruled on separately, um, as we previously discussed in previous demolition cases. Um, the existing structure is not a contributing, and the existing structure was built in 1970s and does not have any historic or character-defining architecture detail. Um, the applicants did satisfy the requirement to submit historical documentation that is provided in your packets. Um, a brief summary on the architectural history and photos of the current residents were submitted. Um, because it's not a contributing structure, that is sufficient for staff and should be sufficient for um, meeting that requirement. Um, <coughs> The proposed new construction will meet zoning requirements such as setbacks, height, and impervious coverage. Um, the accessory structure is also meeting um, zoning uh, requirements. It will feature mostly compliant building material. Um, there is some vinyl mixed in there in the building material, so that is not compliant with the guidelines, but the commission <coughs> has the ability to approve material that is not compliant. Um, the proposed driveways will need to be approved by public services along, the proposed tr along with the proposed tree removal in the right-of-way, so that part of the decision-making is left to uh, village staff. Um, the driveways shown right now show three, and I've communicated with the applicant along the Caskill that we only permit two per street. So the one on Coldy is fine, but the three that are shown, um, it's a pretty simple reconfiguration. They're probably going to combine the main driveway with the arc and get the same effect, is my guess. Um, that should not affect uh, the purpose service, but that's something that's going to be worked out between them and our public service department. They'll submit a driveway permit and get permission that way. Um, so they submitted a site plan. The areas in dots are the additions to the foundation that's going to be existing after the demolition occurs. Um, they maintain the existing garage. They're adding an additional garage. Um, they're doing some additions to the rear and to the front. Um, and then we also have the guest cottage in the rear. It does meet setbacks. It's going to be set pretty deep. It's a very wooded residence, so it should blend in because of that and shouldn't be anything that's uh, not compliant with other dwelling uh, accessory dwelling units. Um, once again, this is the front of the home. These are photos submitted by the applicant. Um, this is the current front elevation that they had done. They provided a very detailed report um, to us, so it was great to have that much information. This is the east side of the home, and once again, we have that elevation showing it, so we have that documentation going forward with us after the structure is demolished. We have the, I believe, left side of the home, and now we have the right side of the home showing that garage. 
And then this is what's being proposed to replace what's currently existing. We have what I would call a craftsman style architecture, mainly because the blending of different materials. Um, it has a unique character defining roof line, which is actually kind of nice. It makes it not seem so much like a cookie cutter home, so to speak. So it brings an extra element of architecture to the home to help it kind of blend in with the uniqueness of all the character defining elements within the historic district. Um, they're proposing shutters. Uh, the shutters are equal widths to the window, so that it's compliant with the guidelines in that regard. Um, so that was the front elevation. I believe this is the left elevation, showing a screened-in porch. Um, as you can see, they're continuing that shake siding all throughout with a brick foundation. And this is the rear, showing the chimney, along with a rear porch and shake shining on the back, along with that brick exterior. The chimney, I believe, will match the brick siding as well. And then this is the right side, showing that addition of the garage, and once again, that additional screened-in porch that was shown in the rear one as well. The applicant submitted a building material form. Um, once again, the one building material that they submitted that is not compliant is the vinyl windows. Vinyl, though, has been approved before. Um, in their application, they provided a very detailed list of all the materials, and these are the examples. Um, we're doing digital because of COVID. Um, this is the exterior siding showing the brick, as well as the shake siding showing the type of material they'll be using. Um, the Benjamin Moore Swiss coffee color is within our color code, so it is compliant. Um, the plan are for vinyl double hung windows with muttons above the windows is a wood trim piece in a walnut satin to match the front door. Um, once again, all this is compliant, the design of the windows, the type of windows, it's just that material vinyl that is not. Um, they're doing a rounded front door. Rounded front doors are not common, but they definitely are prevalent throughout the uh, district on different homes and a round door is going to be also matched on the accessory dwelling. So they're taking that extra care to make sure that some architectural elements of the primary residence are being shown on that accessory dwelling. Um, here we're showing shutters. Um, in their application, they didn't say what material the shutters were going to be after conversation with the applicant. It will be wood. Um, the black forest green is compliant with our color palette as well. Um, the garage doors the garage door is showing with windows at the top. It's becoming a very common thing throughout the historic district with either upgrades to garages or new construction. Um, so it's going to be compliant with what they're proposing here. Um, they are also proposing some pathways and fencing. Um, the pathways will be that brick sidewalk that they showed in their application. The brick sidewalk is compliant. The fencing is compliant. Um, the fencing will need a separate approval because it needs a fencing permit. But the idea is being shown to you so they can see a whole complete package of what they're doing to this lot. Um, they're also doing a picket gate at the sidewalk entrance, but they're also doing a picket gate at the accessory dwelling as well. Um, the reason is they weren't able to put a garage with it, but they want to be able to park cars over there for their guests. And creating this barrier between the street, the garage, and the fencing makes it feel more cohesive. Um, at this time, staff would like to submit the following into the record. Um, the staff report, presentation, applicant, applicant's material, photos, site plans, and findings of fact. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions for Peter from the commissioners? Anne? Um, the driveway, can you explain what you were, what you, it's just, Yeah, um, it's so we have multiple different codes and regulations that are throughout the village. I work out of the Pinehurst Development Ordinance and the Zoning Code and Historic Guidelines. The second part of that is we work with Public Service, who works out of the Engineering Standards in system manual, and in that manual it states that there's only allowed to be two driveway accesses per street side. So in their moon-shaped driveway, if you will, they're showing two there, and then the existing driveway is that third. So they'd be limited to two. Um, that's not something that you guys should be hindered in making a decision on because that will be handled by a separate staff. Um, driveway layout is not necessarily in the context of the historic district. It's more of a safety issue. Well, actually, I disagree. Okay. It says, doesn't it say the configuration of the driveway, the existing driveway should remain? Yeah, so, but there's other moon-shaped driveways throughout the district. It's not an uncommon design. Um, I'm trying to think of ones. But the configuration is different from the existing. Right? It would be. We have that one right now, right? Yeah, the and so they're going to add that and then. So in addition to. it is different from what's existing, but you have to think that this is also new construction. They're taking away what's there to create something new. So, yes, the current driveway is going to remain in the fashion, but it's not altering anything. It's, it's changing everything. They're submitting a then completely Then if it's new, you home. have to take into account trees, right? And I guess... Um, yeah, so but the, the trees, once again, are not theirs. They're the village of Piners, and it's between public services and them on the, the tree removal. And I've already coordinated with that staff. Um, Jeff Fadden, our assistant village manager, he's going to be coordinating with them on the tree removal. 
Um, so that is something that will be looked at, and I can tell you right now, we don't like taking down trees. You don't have what? We don't like taking down trees. Like, that's nothing that we like to do, but we also do accommodate driveway accesses. So trees could come down. And if they were just proposing a driveway change today, it would be a minor COA. It'd be something handled through staff. So that's one of those other things you should consider when you're reviewing this case is that if they were just presenting a driveway today to you, they wouldn't be because it would be handled at the staff level and the tree removal would be handled at the staff level. Would it be the case, Peter, that if we were to approve the application as submitted, uh, that we would not be tying the hands of staff with respect to matters of tree removal or driveway location? So we, you wouldn't be because in my staff report I mentioned how that there could be changes to the driveway configuration. Um, what you guys are really looking at is the house and the architectural details and how it's congruous as a whole. Um, the driveway, if there was a change, let's just say if we went the most stringent way, could be handled through an adjustment or in a minor COA of the application. So there's a way that staff can handle that change when it does occur. But back to the driveways for a second, though, there are other trees that are, will be removed on the land beyond the right away. Right? That is correct. There, by my count, there were 21 trees being removed basically in the area around including the driveway and right-of-way trees area around the existing one-story dwelling. Uh, and then there would be about another 15 trees around the proposed guest cottage. Um, within the right-of-way of those 21, I think eight of them were marked in the right-of-way. So really you're looking at, what's the math on that, 13. Um, of those 13, there were, that I observed, at least three that were diseased, and the other ones were in the location of the proposed additions. Um, there was also two rear trees that were, like I said, heavily diseased and overgrowth, and they were going to come down eventually. Um, that's just from my observations. Um, there's one tree just left of the driveway that's coming down. Um, I believe there's three or four coming down on that right side, sorry. Over here, right side, there's a couple in here that are coming down. There's two by the front door that are coming down um, as well. And then in the rear, I believe there was six or so coming down here. And then there was additional trees coming over here for the right-of-way, but once again, that's going to be handled between public services. And then obviously the building footprint, there's some existing trees because fortunately, this is a very heavily wooded lot. Um, so any type of improvements or new construction is going to result in some tree removal. So I understand what you said. Mm -hmm. The majority of the tree removal is going to be within the footprint of the new construction. Yep. So if I didn't remove the tree, I couldn't build anything. If we were talking about just, and I don't have a tree survey, I just have my you know, own experience walking the path, I believe the majority of the trees are going to be removed in this area, this area, and then along the roadway. There are some outlying trees over here that will be removed. I believe one of them is being removed, and you'll have to ask the applicant because it's leaning over and it's diseased and they're afraid that it may fall on their house one day. Um, and then obviously there's trees coming out here as well. And they're just removing trees around the foundation as well. Removing trees out of the foundation is not uncommon. That's to protect the you know, safety of the foundation to make sure that they don't have to go in and re-engineer a foundation if tree roots get in there. Um, so it's building footprint and foundation removal is the majority of the trees. I would say more than 70% of the trees are coming out, excluding the right-of-way ones, from the building footprint and the foundation protection. And you're not including the driveway when you say that? I'm not including the driveway in that. Um, if we want to talk driveway, I believe there are three trees coming out here that are outside the right-of-way um, that I've noticed. And I could be wrong, and the applicants are more than happy to, I imagine, answer some of those questions well and confirm or provide additional information. Any further questions for Peter? Another one. So, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Get the floor. So, in the end, Peter, all the materials are compliant except the vinyl windows, is that it? Yep, that is correct. Uh, all the materials are compliant except for those vinyl windows. And what did you say about the fence? Um, think about a permit? I'm sorry, what was that? This fence. You said something about the fence. Yeah, so believe it or not, a building permit does not permit a fence, so the applicants will have to get a separate fencing permit. Um, <laughs> it's just they brought it before you at my recommendation because I think that to help you guys make decisions, you want to see a full, complete vision that's well thought out. Mm -hmm. And showing that they're creating this def defined area for their de back living courtyard, seeing that they're 
considering their neighbors and wanting to kind of shield that potential driveway parking area with the fence shows you that they've been very thoughtful. And that's kind of really what you want to see in applications and when they come before you is that they've decided what they're going to do, they're going to act on what they're going to do, and they're going to build within the guidelines and congruous with the district. Um, we don't want people to come in here with half thoughts. We want them to come fully thought out, and I think that that inclusion does that. Very a very extensive package, which I appreciate. Like, I would even add that my report is so extensive because of how extensive their, their material was. I was able to provide so much detail because of how much detail they provided. It's an amazing report that you guys have for their agenda. Uh, Peter. Any, uh, <laughs> Any All right, Mr. Harry, questions you have a question? I do. Maybe a procedural for the commission to discuss separately, but why is it we don't require a tree survey? So we do and we don't. Uh, so it's part of the zoning process, but it's not part of the HPC process. It's just required that a site plan be submitted. A tree survey will be required at the permitting process. They have not gone through that process yet because they wanted to receive approval from you guys. It's um, for, for a... a um, project of this size, a number of trees involved. It, it's just not a requirement. It's not something that we require. It's something that if you want to talk outside of this public hearing that we could adjust the guidelines to include that, we definitely could. But the applicants have met all the requirements to submit a complete application. Thank you. But, but I believe, Peter, there is reference in the guidelines to not altering the canopy significantly. Yeah. So under, uh, I believe, section V2 V or section 7, however you want to say it, uh, vegetation legend vegetation landscape it says that tree removal should not alter the canopy or significantly diminish the historic canopy um, and that's true um, but I think you got to look at this in a whole context I don't know if all of you kind of walk the site like I do I get the ability to actually walk there because I have permission to be on the property extensively um, it's a very wooded lot not a lot of our lots that are in the historic district are as wooded as this one um, it's a very large lot it's you know it's hard to even see with the existing structure because of the amount of trees um, so by them removing a few of the trees, I don't know what the percentage is. I, I don't do those numbers. They have a lot of understory trees that aren't shown. Um, I don't think that you're going to see a historic canopy affected. Like it's going to match what other historic canopies are. It's going to be similar to other lots. And that's kind of our test when we're reviewing all these cases is how does this proposal compare to other, uh, compare to other cases or other homes, other lots within the historic district? So when you think about the historic canopy, yes, the trees are coming out, but development's going to happen. But is it going to be so much trees coming out that it's not resembling the historic district anymore? They're fortunate because they have so many trees. In your opinion, then, it's not going to affect the canopy significantly? Tom, My Tom, opinion, Tom, it would Tom, not. Use the microphone. I don't turn to I'm him. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I did, my question to Peter was then, in his opinion, then it's not going to affect the canopy for which it, we're supposed to be looking at. Like, it will affect the canopy in the sense trees are coming out, but I don't think it's going to affect it in a significant manner. I don't think that the proposed <clears throat> removal is so aggressive that it would be diminished. Um, I don't know how familiar all of you are with the historic district, but if you go down Medlin, uh, there's plenty of homes down Medlin that don't have any trees um, that were recently built and approved in 2018. So, not that that gives credence to this, but it's an example of how this is a compliant and congruous looking lot, even post tree removal. This could be where the deer are living that go down to 605. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I walk the Arboretum and there's definitely a family of deer, so I'm sure they migrate over the road not too far away. So you guys will be back for a six foot fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, they should be able to get one. Uh, any other questions for Peter? I've, uh, oh, no, I've one for the family, but I guess. I have none for Peter. <laughs> Any more? Peter. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. McCabe, uh, would you like to make a presentation uh, to the commission? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, thank you all. And thanks, Peter, for uh, setting us up. Um, again, Michael McCabe, my wife, Amanda, we're just um, pleased to be here this evening. We've been looking for a home in the village for the last couple of years, and we're really pleased to find uh, 90 East McCaskill. Uh, closed earlier this year. Uh, we know this is a major project. Uh, we're excited about the plan. Um, we're glad that it complies with what you're looking for. Look forward to the conversation. And um, my wife gets all the credit for putting this together uh, with some help from Peter. Um, but we're uh, open to any questions you may have for us and really excited about uh, the opportunity to enhance the village in some way and uh, be part of the community. 
Uh, questions for the McCabe's? Yes, David. Yeah, Nabea. A regular thing. Several questions about the windows. Um, looks to me like you, you had an example in your wonderful presentation, double hung windows. Yes. Uh, but when I look at the elevations, there are several windows that, by virtue of their shape, don't look like they're double hung at all. So I thought I'd, if we could go through those, maybe you can help us understand what your plans are. Starting with the front elevation, there's a dormer. Yeah, I'm assuming that would be a single, you fixed, know, a fixed, fixed window. Sing, yeah, with a, a, a well, very we, wide. Uh, we have an architect in um, in the Raleigh area that we've worked with previously. He's drawn up the plans, and I don't know the exact size of those windows without um, having looked, you know, in great detail and then compared what we could do. I, our idea is to have the double hung windows just at, that tilt in, so for easy cleaning. So I don't know what the possibilities are. Um, for that size window, if we could do that or not. Otherwise, it would be just a sing, you know, the single. And, and the double hung window we're talking about is a is a multi pane window. It's and yeah, so it's it's with it's got the simulated dividers. Okay, and there are six over six according to the drawing. Yes. Uh -huh. So in some cases, like if we look at those two little windows, each one is, would be about square. Can we presume that's six six simulated panes? I, I would I would think so. Okay. Um, um, there is a little tiny rectangle right at the peak. Is yeah. that a window? Or is That's actually, no, it's, um, I don't know if it's in this package or not. It was in some of the supplemental materials. It's actually just a little sign that says not, uh, 90. It says number and 90 there. It was in there. some of the materials. It's, it's just a painted wood sign with the house number on it. Okay. To be fair, I didn't include every material item in the presentation, but it is in your packets. Okay. Um, I no believe problem. it's like the 14th page or something like that. That's why I missed it. it was, yeah. I didn't get to 14. I got to 13. Yeah. <laughs> There's a window. Uh, um, I think it's going serving a bathroom. It's on the first floor, and it's uh, about in the middle there. Yes, I see. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it's higher than all the others, yet it looks like a double hung proportion. Would it? Would 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 it be more reasonable to put it at the normal height and make it a square since you have other squares? Certainly, and we can talk. We can get that done with the architect. I, I would agree. It looks a little high in that picture. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's not part of the just questions. Yeah. Second page, um, <coughs> rear elevation. Uh, I have no question. Yeah. No, no questions. Uh, right side elevation, no questions there. And the left side elevation, similar question. On the, the left end of the left elevation, there are two long horizontal windows. Those are above the master um, bathroom. So they'd be fixed also, and they would they'd they, be fixed. Yes, fixed. Would they like be three lights, maybe? Green dividers. Three divide. Yeah, I would just think. What? Yeah. Simulated. Yes, light. three, three on each. Mm -hmm. Three and three. <coughs> and there's a little triangle thing up at the very peak again. There. Is that a window? Sorry, I don't understand why. Uh, right. Just to the right of the chimney, near the top, just below the roof line. Oh, the, the little tri is that just the dimensions of the of the pitch? No, it's oh, oh, at the very top. It's just a vent. vent. Yes, I'm sorry. A vent. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a vent. Okay. Okay, and then on to the guest house. This is all part of one application, right, Peter? Oh, yeah. Okay. On the guest house, uh, uh, left side elevation. I'm presuming that the, the steps to the doors are just not drawn, <coughs> right? Yes, that's right. Because it'd be a big step. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to the left of the door, there are two windows, double hung, I presume, six over six, are strangely higher than the door. I think we just really, um, when the architect was putting the preliminary plans together, she typically doesn't do all the elevations, but we needed them for purposes of this meeting today, and so I think she'll adjust those um, okay. accordingly. Okay, great. Um, and similarly, guest house rear elevations got that horizontal thing again. I presume that's three simulated lights. Yeah, uh, yes, it's over the bathroom uh, as all, well. All the while, we're working on lights of similar proportion. Throughout. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Question, questions? Aaron? We see option one in, in the right side elevation. Oh. The two uh -huh. pages indicate option one, I think. It does say option one, and that's because our uh, architect gave us two options, and we selected that one, and she just, didn't, oh, okay. she just didn't erase option one. That's our only option. That's our selected option. That is what's going to happen. Absolutely, yes. Okay, got it. <laughs> okay. 
I, I was looking for two. We won't switch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I think she just forgot to make okay, the question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Richard. Forgive my ignorance here. English garden, is that just sod? Is that grass? Or is that, like, <laughs> is that a hard pan? Patio? I'm hoping not to. We were just at, um, we were at overseas and were inspired by the sculpted garden. So I'm actually hoping to have a boxwood garden centered in the middle of it with a, a water feature and then some um, sculpt gardens, you know, flower beds all around sides with herbs. It's not concrete, it's not impervious surface or anything like that. It's just going to be... No, it'll landscape. probably just be like a little gravel path in between the plant beds. <laughs> other questions, comments? Other questions? Yeah, yeah, can we just follow up with the trees? Yeah. You, you want to talk about that? I will. I will. I'd, I'd be happy to address that. I We both would like a large number of trees on the... We're, we're not in any way shape or form interested in taking out more trees than we absolutely have to. The ones that we selected as we walked the property we thought might be dangerous, the ones that were close to the house. Also, the house hasn't really been, um, uh, I would say the lot itself hasn't been uh, cared for in, in terms of so there's a lot of undergrowth, there's a lot of tr um, trees that have just kind of sprouted up in, in spots that, that, that kind of mask the house. In fact, one of our builders said, I've been by this house, I can't even tell you how many times I didn't even know it was back here, but it, it, it was so, set so far back and masked. So the only trees that we want to take at the front of the main house really are for the purpose of a sidewalk that leads up to the front door of the house and then to open it up just a little bit. But we want to maintain most of the trees that, that are on the lot. The others toward the back of the property or on the, on the side where the guest house are, are just really for the purpose of, of the building itself. We want it to be a private cottage way in the back. So we don't want to, we're not looking to get rid of a lot of trees here. But the, what, the driveway, is that? Oh, the, the, the reason for the circle, the, the half circle driveway, the purpose of that is the front door present front door, you have to get to it by walking around the garage and up to the front door. And aesthetically, we really like the, the look of the nice long um, herringbone pattern in the, in the brick going straight to the front door. Well, if you're a FedEx driver or even company coming over, it would be nicer if we could just have just a half moon drive right there sent with the centered gate that would look nice as you walk up to the front door of the house. So we thought it seemed kind of natural to put in the half moon. It's possible that maybe the some of those trees could be incorporated if we adjust, you know, where the entrance and the exit of the driveway are. Um, and the reason it kind of has the, the half circle with the, let's, uh, there's a, I was thinking we could maybe put a plant, an ivy bed or something kind of right in the center of it as a nice feature. But that makes, I guess, two, an entrance and an exit to that driveway. So that might be problematic. Um, we're trying to minimize the number of trees we have to take out, but yet we also want to open it up and have, and really have a nice view of the home as well with the sidewalk going up to the front. The guest house driveway? The guest house driveway is just really straight back access to the guest house, and, we've, and we want it to go all the way back, and, and then we'll put a fence around that drive to, to hide the cars that are parked there, or a car that's parked there. Um, but that's the only purpose of those trees for removal. And honestly, um, the surveyor put the um, guest house in that position, and I don't know if we could move it five feet one way or five feet another, if there's a, a very significant tree that we like to save there. Um, I, I, he, he didn't walk the lot to see, oh, this is a great tree, we don't want to eliminate that. So if it could be shifted a little bit and still stay within the setbacks, we're, we'd certainly be willing to do that. They could know. shift it five feet. Sorry? They could shift it five feet. They have more than five feet that they could shift. The setback requirement is 10 feet. You all, would, you all would be all staff on that when you stake out corners and do all that. Okay. Yeah, and that's just a minor adjustment to anything that wouldn't even require another hearing or minor COA. It would just be an updated site plan, and the reason would be to, you know, save a mature tree, and oh. that would suffice. I would add, we might, we'll probably put a couple of red beds in the front as well where those ivy beds are um, near the sidewalk just to add some color rather than just the, in, in some um, foliage at a lower level than just the high pines. And one last question. What about vinyl windows? I mean, I just think we need some justification unless we're going to just waive this rule or eviscerate well, I, it. So I, I, I have a question on the vinyl wind, okay. windows that go with that. But yeah. an issue that I believe we've had, and the reason they ended up, if I remember correctly, in the 
guidelines was the quality of the vinyl windows that are being used. <clears throat> I mean, there are some vinyl windows out there for which quality is probably not even acceptable to be put in the same sentence with them. <laughs> uh, so my question to you is, this has to do with these vinyl windows, mm -hmm. the quality of the vinyl windows that you're looking at using. There's a Pella 350 um, vinyl window that seems to meet the criteria that you all are looking at, um, and also ours. It's a, I'm, honestly, all the building companies have been recommending the vinyl windows, not the wood Fine. with the aluminum clad. So that's why we chose vinyl windows. I mean, if it's a problem, we could do the other. But for ease of purpose and cleaning, and we're not getting the low end. I can price it. I can tell you the price. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I'd rather have, a, you know. So then they're good Pella windows. Oh, yes. Not, yes. Yeah. yeah. Come off we're not going to spend this kind of money on this house and this property I, without I, putting good. And I understand that. I just wanted to make sure I understood and it was in the record as to what we were using for quality. Yeah. yeah. Because that is some of the issue with, with yeah. vinyl is that some of them are just something you don't want to use or we don't want to use. I can understand that. I just wanted to clarify that for the record. Yeah. Uh, like we're not talking about. No. They're not, shelf they're not $110 windows from the Home Depot, no. <laughs> okay. I, I'm happy to wait. And on, on the trees, I actually, just to speak what Peter said, I walked this lot, I don't know when you all bought it, six, seven months ago maybe? February. And, and so didn't have your consent to walk the lot today, but walked it extensively back then. And you could, you could take down tens of trees there and not, not know. Well, I, I go mean, by there is, all the time. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm very familiar with it. I didn't walk the property, but it's... Peter, you had an interesting overhead shot as to how wooded the rear of that lot is. Yeah. I think. I will add, I mean, we haven't had... Um, we haven't had the tree company come in yet, but there are a lot of dead trees that need to be removed that, yeah. uh, I mean, it really needs some tending. Dead trees aren't going to significantly impact the canopy. No. no, no. They have yeah, they have. <laughs> so, but just from this picture, and I don't know how old and big a picture it is, but it does show a pretty significant canopy cover. Well, yeah, and I just scrolled over to Medlin to show yeah, something that recently got approved. Well, even that, if you go back to the one, the lot we're discussing, you take a look at the lots right next to it, and that that particular lot, go a little farther, look at the one right to the left on that picture down. Yeah, right in there. Doesn't have half the canopy. No, they have a lot of the, open space. It's about the heaviest canopy right there, maybe across the street in Codley. Codley. So I, I, well, Culty is a lot of canopy, right? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, on the other side of Cudley. Smart to not put in the pool because your neighbor across the street putting in one. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so never yeah. win a pool. <laughs> Any other questions for the applicants? Have none. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion by the members of the commission. I just have a question. So all the questions that David asked, what happens to those? And the answers, are the, they're part of the record and? They're part of the part record, of the and record. you guys can condition that the windows are level with one another and that they have simulator divided, that the horizontal ones have three dividers, that the uh, horizontal in the front has six panes. You guys can condition all that if you'd like. I think the fact that it's that we're approving it in accordance with the record. Yeah. And stated in the record fairly clearly by by the owners that though that's what their intent is. If you ever come back with a question to it, I think it would be easy to point to the record and say this is what we discussed and this is what their answer was. And so I think a lot of those conditions, by the fact that we discussed them and placed them in the record, uh, would clarify that instead of going down and saying the window on the left. Well, I don't know. For ease of reference, wouldn't it make more sense to have them just boom, boom, boom? Wouldn't it be easier for the owners even, maybe, instead of their pouring over the record again? I don't know. I'd be happy to throw it out. Well, I think that, with that, if that's what the concern is, a little more words. I'd be I'm happy sure to. The, the intent of any record is to increase the number of words in it and try to say that that adds clarity just by adding the number of, of doing it. I mean, the detail is there. The questions were asked and were answered in detail, and I don't think putting additional wording into the record, and this is just my view, putting additional wording into the record is going to make it any clearer than what was already stated in that. 
Uh, and I uh, offer my, my, own, thought, my, own, my own opinion. I, there are other uh, situations in which I would like the idea of our providing a list of some of the clarifications that have been provided by the owners. Uh, my own personal opinion is uh, that that's not necessary in this case uh, because the testimony we heard is from the people who are going to live in this house and who are spending their own money to uh, build it uh, appropriately. I personally have confidence that they will make reasonable judgments as their testimony uh, has indicated. Uh, so I would not feel uncomfortable leaving the record as it, as it is. Uh, but we certainly can, if we want to, uh, condition our approval uh, not being on, appropriate to on, condition on details. On the only thing it would mean is that as a practical matter, uh, we wouldn't be able to issue a decision immediately because we would have to create a list of those details from David's uh, testimony, uh, test questioning uh, and their testimony in response, uh, and then presumably approve uh, a, uh, an appropriate order at, the, at our next meeting. We could do that. Well, I would think that would be fine. I mean, unless we're going to start building tomorrow. I mean, would you would would a delay of one month in getting your certificate of appropriateness a cause a serious problem? Or next meeting. But, but our, what's the purpose? That's Why are we deciding to editorialize on this issue? We we tried that on another one earlier today. We we don't need to add those kind of comments if we're already on the record, like this guy says. We've got why add more words? Well, I mean it's clear already. I, I, I'm I'm not suggesting that we do or we don't. The issue has been raised, and I'm trying to address the practical consequences if we want to take what certainly is a reasonable uh, thing for us to do. We've heard uh, more details about certain aspects of the windows and some of the other things from this testimony than, than appears in the written record. Uh, and if the members of the commission feel it appropriate, uh, and want that detail spelled out as part of the order in which we approve what uh, they're proposing to do, that's the way we can do it. Do so you want to vote on that or what? Uh, well, I think the answer is if somebody comes up with a motion and we vote the motion up or down. And I think that's where the answer comes to it. Mm -hmm. A motion on? The issue on the table, on this COA. There's been no motion made thus far. Right. So if you so wish I, to make a motion and include Well, no, I would that. just like to discuss this a little bit further. I mean, could we write these down in the next 15 minutes? Does it take a month to write them down? I mean, yeah. Can I just make I a quick, could include quick, it in quick comment? Um, to my motion to approve. So I, I, I know there are questions, yeah. and um, can, we answer them. Yeah, just <clears throat> to your point, maybe just to list what the questions are, we'll answer them again as best we can. I think we're all aligned around some of the um, clarifications that you needed, but I'd prefer not to wait another month, just given I, I wouldn't wait. we're all here right now. and okay. I, think I would be of the opinion that, that the answers implied changes that were minor enough versus what we saw. And as Terry said, the answers are now part of the record. There have been other cases that have come before us where something much more significant was changed, and that should be noted. And I think be clear, but in my opinion would be in this case that the, the the answers to your questions and the changes that were implied by them are, in the context of the entire project, relatively minor. If we were going to add a window, add a door, they were... Take down a tower. <laughs> take down a tower. I mean, a, a hundred other things that are significant, I would clearly think that it would be conditioned in there because those are, are such significant changes. My opinion is I think those changes that we had here were more for clarification and are clearly in the record and were stated. And if they're not complied with, the, if the record is not complied with, then you have no choice but to go back to that record. I can add it into what the answers were. I can add it into the finding of facts. I can go through the record, add it in, and say additional findings were made and make this part of the additional findings that Eric eventually signs. It wouldn't be a condition, but it'd be listed for both us and the applicant for the record That's that right. way as well. Great. That idea. would ease it. It'll be added to the approval, you mean? 
Uh, no, it'd be added to the paper version that Eric signs yeah, okay. if you guys approved it as is. And that way it'd be recorded. You know, for the record, we would provide it the applicant. The applicant would have it so they are aware of what changes or how the windows should be arranged and how we're talking about right now. And I can do that, go back through and make sure that that happens. So that I know when I go and review it that what they said they were going to do is done. And that way they know when they're going through the process, they have to comply with the dividers on this window above their master bedroom. And I assume that would be helpful for you also as you're trying to comply with everything and go back to well, your architect. I, I think what happened is that, like I said, the architect, when she normally does preliminary plans, doesn't do all elevations. And so this is kind of part of her second. Um, so she kind of put it together for what we needed for purpose of the, of the meeting today, or so we thought. Make a call on this today, what's in front of us. If we're good with that, that's the decision. There's the backstop. If it's major, it comes back before us. If it's minor, Peter can handle it. All right, do we have a motion? I think we've got two motions to make, if I'm not That's mistaken. The first one. Yeah. one is demolition. Correct. And the second one, then, is the approval of the new con new construction. I'll, I'll take the first one on. Would you like to make uh, the first of those motions? I'll make the one on demolition, although we don't have a, a model. Uh, <clears> upon <throat> due consideration of the application package submitted for demolition and the testimony given, the Historic Preservation Commission concludes that the demolition is approved and that uh, there has been no time frame attached to that demolition as we can attach a time frame up to 365 day delay. So I'm addressing that particular issue and I, there would be no time delay attached to the demolition. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Why, why don't we put a deadline on it? For some reason we're not well, They've got that. a year to do it. But we can delay it. We can delay it. Oh, Ours is a delay. We can so say it's... it can be demolished, but it can't be done for six months. I see. So and I'm saying... not putting any time frame on it. So they could start, assuming they had the other permits they needed, they could start tomorrow. Okay. But if assuming you don't change your motion to include a deadline, they got a year. Uh, they've got whatever uh, the village authorizes. Technically, they have more than a year. They have a year to pull the demolition permit. And as long as they're making active progress and having inspections, they can technically continue it for okay. a long while. Yeah. The timeline is ours, as I, I was trying to address, was only the delay timeline, and I see no pertinence. I the see. motion has no delay timeline in it. Normally, the only thing that this body can do with respect to an application for demolition is to delay it for up to a year. Idea being, we can't stop you from tearing down a historic building, but we can try to buy time for somebody else to come along who might want to restore, uh, uh, relocate. <coughs> That's, you know, this is not a historic building. Uh, it is. Have it replaced. No I thought I wanted to get it going quick. Right. <laughs> right? uh, Tom has made a motion. Is there a second? I already seconded. John Taylor seconds. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? carries unanimously. Now we need a second motion. Do you want to make a second motion? I, got, I just want to make sure that we're, we're in agreement. The only thing that I see that we aren't congruent, or we aren't within the guidelines on, are the vinyl windows. That is correct. Does anybody else see anything other than the vinyl windows that are not in, that we're not meeting in the guidelines? On materials, yes, right? I don't know where the tree things falls, so I don't, you know. I don't know if that's part of the guidelines or the tree thing is subjective um so it's very much up for you guys to collectively decide on that i, I don't think it's a it's, yeah, a, it's an issue we've we've discussed it it's in the it's in the record what they plan to do no, but you asked what was in compliance with the guidelines and i'm just saying beyond the thing i see unless somebody else if i'm going to make it i'm going to make it for the vinyl windows unless somebody i don't feel yeah, the trees we, we have no information upon which to make judgment about the trees because it's not in the guidelines right. And it's, and, it's, and it's not our final decision to make. Right, for uh, most of those trees. For most of the trees, the final decision will be between the Village of Piners Public Service Department and the homeowners in their driveways. I, our, our wording is general enough. It did, did, do we feel that it impacts the canopy? And I personally don't think, from the testimony we heard, from what we've seen on the drawings, or from the picture from, I assume it's Google, uh, a Google map, that it would, the trees that have been discussed to be removed will significantly impact that canopy. So I don't see that's an exception to our guidelines. Okay. Now, if somebody else wants to 
so you can vote against by motion if you want. Vote for it, however you want to do it, but that's the vinyl windows I do see as an exception to our guidelines, clearly, because we say we can't use vinyl. Okay, on due consideration of the application package submitted and the testimony given, the Historic Preservation Commission concludes the following. That the project as proposed is not in conformity with the guidelines in that we've authorized the use of high quality vinyl windows. Nonetheless, the applicant has satisfied the burden of persuasion and the project subject to any conditions imposed by the commission is deemed, which are none, is deemed co congruous with the Pinehurst Historical District. There a second. I second it. Uh, discussion. Were you going to add that Peter's adding those things, or don't, doesn't that have to be met? No? Those would be uh, findings of fact that, would, that Peter and I will make sure get included in the in the order. Any uh, But they're all. But it's all stuff that's already part of the record. We're not doing anything new. Uh, so that's why I don't think it has to be included in the motion. All right. Uh, no further discussion. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Congratulations. You have your certificate <laughs> of appropriate. Thank Thanks you. All. Thank you. And best now of luck go, with your now new Now you got to go do it with planning. <laughs> it is interesting. Thank you very much. And it was a, a great package. Yes. Thank you. It, it's interesting. It is one of the most more extensive packages we've had. About the only thing it didn't have was the elevations in it. Yeah. But I think we had everything else that we needed. Yeah. So. Thank you very much. May I have a uh, motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The public hearing is closed. Real quickly, let's review minor work. Does anybody have any issues with the fence uh, for Kevin Drum at 60 Blue Road or no dimension greater than 12 structure at 55 Barrett Road for Mr. I have Sabine? No, I have none. Done. All right. Any uh, any further business to come before the meeting? So I took off uh, the historic district guideline changes because I had about 28 or 29 changes listed, and I was like, we need more time than the 45 minutes slash. I want more of your attention than after sitting through four cases. Um, my dream was to wait for a light meeting. That's probably not going to happen, is my guess, based on the fact that I'm probably going to see four or five more cases next month. Um, so I'm going to reach out to you guys and see if you guys are willing to do a work session. Um, Kelly has told me that we can provide lunch for that work session, so we'll feed you if you're willing to come and sit down for maybe an hour and a half or two um, in that meeting. You can always bribe me with food. Uh, <laughs> in that meeting, uh, Anne would also like to discuss some procedural changes. Um, one of the ones that she sent me that I thought was really good um, was adding the requirement of burden of proof. Um, so having the applicants sit more, submit more photos and submit examples of their designs and how it is being congruous with the district, um, I think that's a great addition. Um, I also think, though, that we need to be loose in that one a little bit just because the scale of projects changes. You know, for a person that's putting up a six-foot fence, how much proof do they need to provide versus a person that's doing a whole new construction? Um, so I would leave that one a little vague and let staff kind of interpret what is needed for that. Um, but the kind of things we can talk at this meeting. That's exactly. I was just bringing up what to expect. Um, and then other changes, there's a lot of grammatical and just consistency throughout the document along with uh, some changes that staff would like to see happen. Peter, is it, is it worthwhile circulating the proposed changes first so that you could get feedback yeah, on so those and then the meeting would be to after you collated? The subject matter that was what yes. I was going to do. Is, is my, so Alex and I are going to sit down Monday. Um, and review the changes and kind of make sure that I've got them correct. Um, that way he and I both review them and then he'll be a part of that as well. He's the other senior planner. I'm not, I, I think everybody's had the opportunity to meet Alex. Um, and so he and I will sit down and discuss those changes because he used to do this job and he was part of that rewrite process so he can provide some historical background that uh, I severely lack on why certain things were put in there versus why certain things weren't. Um, so I'll reach out probably tomorrow, kind of coordinate what your guys' availability is or preference for days and see how many I can get you in the room. If you can't attend, that's fine. Just let me know one way or the other. Um, if we do end up having a quorum, we'll have to advertise the meeting, I believe, right? 
um, and post a notice and all that kind of stuff. So it is important that if you are going to make a quorum that we uh, definitely show up. Um, it will be recorded. All that kind of stuff will happen as well. It won't be recorded like this. We'll just do it in the conference. It'll just be um, audio recording, no visual. Other than that, you guys are free to go unless you have any questions or for me. I've got a, a thought on that, on the, what you just said. Um, I'm not sure we have to have a quorum at that meeting. No, I'm saying if we unless, do. Yeah. Unless we're going to pass some kind of motion. So if we agree to a bunch of things and want to pass them on to the Later date. to the village council, then we would clearly need that by motion and that would have a, a quorum. My desire to be a little bit more transparent and just do that approval at a regular scheduled meeting. I think um, that, was that would be, be my, my severe preference. Um, I think we could probably work it out there and then yeah. say, even work the motion if you want, but and save the voting to a regular meeting when yeah. it's. Well, Peter, I have a question. Because um, like one of the things I'm suggesting is we look at the rules of procedure for this commission, which were last done in 2013. Yeah, it would not hurt. Yeah, and. Does that need council approval, the, rules of, the rules of procedure, or is that within our... I um, believe it does, but I'd have to go look. If it's in the document itself, the document is governed oh. by council. The council okay. will have to approve All the it. documentation is basically covered by council. Just P&Z? Okay. Okay, well, maybe not. But Let me double check. If we're going to vote on something, we're going to need a quorum. That's That was um, my point. In Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. So, that's something we have to do anyways. Okay, good. <laughs> so, that's one of the proposals. We were just discussing. Yeah, that. we need to ad address vinyl no. windows in the worst way. And I don't know how really some of you guys that are in the architecture. I have a lot to say about that. How, how to put words in there is to the quality or oh, we've got the Pella exemption going right now <laughs> yeah I know. how we can allow vinyl windows without allowing the cheap crap to come in that we don't want <laughs> right vinyl windows are not cheap crap. Yeah. Well, there you go <laughs> but I'm not sure I want to word it that way in the I, I, I have two thoughts too and I know and that, that would look to you guys to do that. I yeah. have to say that the, the issue of the vinyl windows, the, the fact that it's made of vinyl, it isn't in most other historic districts I've been to, is not the fact that it's vinyl that's the issue. Right. The issue is the proportion of the pieces. We don't address that at all. We completely sidestep the point that you usually fight about in the historic commission. You know, whether it's and we argue six about over vinyl. six or a three over three. Yeah, and how wide is it? Yeah. You know, if you look at a historic wooden window, they're very narrow. Even a really good vinyl window is way fatter than that, and we don't address it at all. So we're missing the whole point. Okay. In my <laughs> personal opinion. That's what we need to discuss in the vinyl window issue, because right. I think we need to get out of this business of what? accepting vinyl windows every time we go. Yeah. And, and more as a larger point, vinyl windows tends to be by far and away the one thing that is not in conformity when we approve something, even though it doesn't meet the guidelines. That's it's almost point. always vinyl windows and almost only vinyl windows. Because that's about almost all of what everybody uses these yeah. days because they last so much longer in the maintenance. And we've heard testimony from builders about the qualities improved and that's why they're and, and the quality of vinyl windows isn't what it used to be. Right. There's a big difference there. Right. And, and maintenance wise. And I think your point is excellent too about that. And what we ought to be looking at is, is the thicknesses and, and those kinds of things, aesthetically, how it looks in accordance to right. historical windows right. I don't versus... Think there's, there's nobody in this room that could drive down the street and look at a window from the street and know whether it's vinyl or wood. I was going to say, I'm not you sure I tell. could. But you can sure tell how fat it is. You, right. you, you can't. I might pick out the wood ones, but the rest of them I wouldn't have You, you could pick out vinyl. <laughs> but the other, the other piece that's important is not fair to the applicant is they don't have a yardstick by which to measure Right. right. If we have it written out, they know whether they need it for volume or changes. Right. And don't even raise the question. Because we're, we're spending forever talking about vinyl windows. And, and builders who work here with frequency, they will read the change and they will know. They, they won't even recommend. I, I think builder that I use, he would never recommend something that wasn't going to be approved. Right. Good. Vinyl windows definitely needs to be on that discussion list. <laughs> it is.
Well, if, what if we had a, I mean, is there a tree expert for the town who goes and evaluates? I have an arborist. He doesn't work for that capacity. He only does work on publicly owned property. Uh -huh. So he well, wouldn't go on to somebody else's property and do that work. If there's another piece of the bigger process that requires the tree survey anyway, why don't we have access to it? If, have to pay if for there's it anyway. one available, it would be nice to have it, but the question is, do we want to name Richard, it? Richard, on, on the issue of fees, I don't think fees are within our purview. No, they're not. No. I think he was speaking more to the fact that we shouldn't keep on placing things that hinder the process. Yeah. I mean, we could get eventually to places like California where you can't submit a package to anybody in the local government in California unless it's drafted and signed by an engineer and the architect and 15 other people because they won't accept it. They won't even accept the package that way. And I'm not sure we want to head in that kind of direction. Maybe we need clearer guidelines so that we know what we're looking at. They know what we're that looking at. I true. mean, that's what we have to address. I Maybe think. we should rewrite the guidelines if Peter has 20. No, oh, no, yeah, I did not say that. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Would anyone like to entertain a motion to adjourn? Yes. So vote. <laughs> So moved. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.